Hi, this is Rebecca from Rebecca's Sewing Corner and today I'm going to be doing something slightly different with my binder. I'm going to be working on preparation for a project. Uh, let me show you uh, what it is and it's going to require binding outer curves. So I like this kind of shorts where you have this kind of retro or vintage or whatever looking, whatever you want to call it, looking um, bound corners and as you can see here you have uh, an outer curve um, which isn't something we usually do uh, in the majority of our sewing projects usually we're doing inner curves like what you have up here on the pocket um, and uh, I have found actually in <laughs> several attempts of trying to do these outer curves that it doesn't always turn out the way I'd like it um, it kind of just goes wonky on me for uh, many different reasons, which I'll share with you uh, along the way. So the goal is to use my trusted binder, uh, which I have already um, adjusted with the paper hack to be a single fold. So this is normally a, a double fold binder with a 10 millimeter uh, finished result. Put the paper in as per the paper hack method so that it's a single fold so I have a raw edge uh, on the wrong side making for a little bit less bulk. So I've got my binder all uh, ready to go and um, what I've also done to uh, to help me out is I've gone I took my pattern and I took uh, some of the fabric that I'm going to be using for the project um, which has a little bit of stretch in it. Um, this is some kind of poly cotton blend that I picked up at one spot and uh, you know just need to use up the rest of it but what I did do is I cut a um, mock-up of this pattern piece so with this uh, outer curve here um, and I actually have two pieces of it so I'm not gonna I'm not cheating you guys um, to to practice with you and to uh, to go through the steps that I took or will take to um, hopefully complete this project uh, in a satisfactory way and not one where I just hope you can't see it from the road. Um, for demonstration purposes I have cut uh, already a whole bunch of binding um, in an extremely contrasting color so that we really can see what's going on and and you know pick apart the results um, and uh, and have a look at that and I have threaded up my machine also with extreme contrasting colors, which you'll see in a bit, uh, so that we really can see what's going on. Because I think that's important and, um, you know, I think if you want to, to use this method to um, do your own projects, you should see and and feel and understand uh, sort of the, the learning process in, in going that goes into this. Um, and, and how to adjust for your project. You might be doing something maybe for small babies where this outer curve is actually even tighter, right? And, and so you, I wanna um, give you some of the methods that I used uh, to um, help you uh, help yourself when you get to, uh, get to your project. So I'm going to um, switch over to my machine because I pretty much, you know, I've done all the preparation. I have my mock-ups, I have my mock-up corners. Uh, I've got my binding cut and wound up on a spool so that I'm, I'm ready to go. And I've got my binder already prepared for the paper hack. Okay, so this is the goal. Um, cute little pair of shorts for one of the kids. Um, and uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, journey. And let's go see what we can do. Okay, so I'm up in my machine. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you might notice uh, that this is a different machine. Um, it's uh, it's still the same brand. Um, I was uh, very fortunate uh, and my boss gave me a bonus, so I gave myself a bonus um, and uh, picked up uh, this uh, new cover stitch. Um, so first thing, what I do recommend is putting down a piece of uh, scotch tape, clear tape, um, that you can also remove uh, if you if you want to um, because we're going to be I'm going to be making some some sweet spot markings uh, on the bed um, and, you, and you'll see why I'm going to use those uh, going forward when we uh, take the first pass so 
the first sweet spot that I have already marked here on the right hand side of the two uh, is the standard position of the binder um, when we're just doing straight or the um, neckline inner curve kind of binding and um, it's basically getting me set up so that the lower bumper is in line with my um, leftmost needle because I use the left and center when I'm uh, doing my binding. I that's the position I prefer. So the lower bumper is, is lined up with that uh, needle tick mark on the foot. And this is just the general sweet spots position that I always use. Now I'm going to go grab my trusted little stand. Sorry, not too much room here um, to put my spool of binding on and um, pull that through. So put that over. Now I'm not going to be looping the um, strip of fabric through too many times. Um, I found I want, let's say, a, for this specific project, sort of a normal amount of tension. I don't want an extreme amount of tension on the strip, just sort of a normal amount. If you do need more tension, um, you can pull the rake forward or you can weave your um, strip through more times. But for this purpose, I found sort of a normal amount is uh, is good. So I push my strip through. I'm just going to quickly pull it back underneath the foot and lower my presser foot. And with that, uh, that's the uh, quick and short version of um, getting my machine set up for binding. And I'm going to take one of my um, mock-ups and I'm just going to put it in and we're going to give it a whirl and we're going to see what happens. Forgot to take the pin out of my uh, spool. Doesn't help. Now you'll notice for this pass, um, I basically just did my binding as is. I just went through and I'd like to show you what that looks like and I'll show you what bothers me uh, when we're doing, when I don't uh, adjust anything. And then we'll, I'll take you through some of the next steps uh, that I set up for myself that seem to make it work better. So taking this out and I'm going to uh, cut off the binding relatively short so that I can use the rest of it. Now let's have a look. Now one of the things that I don't like, and, and this time I was actually pretty lucky, um, is that when you're doing the inner curves, the distance between the edge of your binding and the needles often gets really, really tight. Right. So what often happens when you're doing these inner curves is that your, your leftmost needle will actually start wandering over and as you see here get really really close to the edge and if you're unfortunate it might even drift over so far that it goes onto your fabric and that your right needle is barely even um, on, on your binding. Right, and, and that's just not what you want to have. It doesn't look nice. You get frustrated and that's about <laughs> when I gave up last time. The other thing that you'll also see on the back side, and that's what I was talking about, about some contrasting uh, threads, is that um, your the raw edge is at this moment still within, in between your needles, but you can see it drifting also towards the right hand uh, needle. And, and then when you get so when you, when you start around the corner, this is from right to left now, when you start around, it sort of drifts in, drifts in, drifts in, and when you get back outside to the end of the quarter, corner, then um, you're almost back lined up. Okay, so this is just the example of sending it through as it is. You'll also notice you've got a bit of um, challenge here with the curve. Now, this is... This is um, something that I thought I would never have to deal with in my uh, in my sewing career. Um, has an, it's an issue with uh, basic math and the fact that 
the distance around the inner curve of your binding and the distance around your outer curve of your binding is not the same, but you still have the same strip that needs to uh, stretch itself around. So that's the example of not doing anything and not doing anything to try and mitigate. So um, you know what the starting point is. And let's go see and have a look about what we can, what we can do about this. So I'm going to uh, pull back my binding a little bit. Take it through under the foot. And get ready to go with the next strip. Now I'm not going to start all the way up here at the top. I'm just going to sort of feed it in so that um, I'm not wasting so much of my binding. Now, going back to the first attempt, what you'll see is, and, and this is just something to keep in mind for, for the future and for whatever project you might be working on, a good thing to look at is how far did my left needle wander, right? How far did it go from being in a position where I liked it to being really too close to the edge? And I think we're looking at probably one and a half, one, one and a half, maybe at the max two millimeters in this example. Okay, and that's just something to keep in mind uh, with the method that I will be applying in a couple of moments. Okay, so let's just get started. Now, the, for, the first portion of this, um, and when you're going down the uh, straight edge, uh, for example, that I have here, let me just wave that back in front of you, uh, this, this pattern piece has a straight edge either on the side seam or a straight edge on what normally would be the hem at the bottom. So when you're going down that, you really want to have your um, binder positioned in your standard position. And you need to pay a bit of attention to when does the curve start, okay? So I've gotten to a point here where the curve is starting and I'm going to want to sort of take, slowly take some action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently open up my two screws a little bit and I'm just going to push, push my binder over slightly. And you can see that in connection with the line that I have on my sweet spot and just tighten up my screws again. So it's just been pushed over gently. And that's sort of the first step that I take when I'm getting into the curve. So I'm going to take a few more stitches. And I'm getting into a spot where I still have some more curve. I'm gonna go over a little bit more. getting back into a spot where it's getting close to the straight edge again and and this is one thing that I've also noticed is important is not to wait too long before adjusting so I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna move my binder back to the sweet spot which is why it's also nice to have the sweet spot marked because it's gonna take a couple of stitches a couple of centimeters Before it straightens out. So let's take this out of the machine and just have a look. And one of the things I just noticed here, and this also happens specifically on this machine because the binder is so close to the foot, I have a bit of a problem of getting my uh, tweezers underneath the foot because it's not loose and not flexible and that was because the binder through the shifting that I was doing got extremely close to the foot and, and was actually blocking it from um, moving. Okay, so what do we got? So for first off, First thing that I notice is that the, the 
stitches from the left needle are actually pretty evenly spaced with the distance between the, the fold of my binding and, and where the needle stitches are. Here it's actually almost a bit more. Right? And that was sort of the, the last spot on my curve. And then we, we go back and uh, here it gets actually a bit closer, which for me would be a sign that I was a little bit too proactive in pushing my binder back to the sweet spot, the original spot where we started, that I was actually still in the curve and I should have waited a tiny bit, or not moved it back completely, but just sort of the halfway mark, like what we had done in the beginning. Now, another thing you'll also notice uh, compared to, to the first attempt is that it's also, it's not curling up quite as much. Now, it's hard, a bit hard to see in the video, um, because we're a little bit, we go from three dimensional to two dimensional, um, but without stretching it or doing anything, this is the curve that I now have from the second attempt with adjusting the binder position a little bit. And if we look at the back side, which for me is also extremely important, we see here, starting from the right, that the raw edge is very, very close to my left needles. Right here, it's actually even right on it, so perfect positioning. And as we sort of discovered here, it's a bit close, the, the left needles are a bit close to the edge. Here we can see that actually on the back side as well, that the raw, raw edge is further away from the left needles. So that's uh, giving a bit of a confirmation. That wasn't quite as, as optimum as, uh, as it could be. Now let's compare a bit the, the curl um, between the second attempt uh, and, and the first attempt. So here I would say the curl is the curl of sort of rolling up isn't as bad um, as on the first attempt. Here, as you can see, it, it's really actually standing almost at uh, 90 degrees to, to my fabric um, without me even stretching or doing anything. Um, and this would probably not work out so well with, uh, with my project. Okay, so what have I done to, to get this uh, even, more even spacing um, from the needle stitches to, uh, to the uh, edge of the binding? I've gone in, I've put a piece of tape on my bed so that I'm not marking up the uh, bed of my machine. After estimating how much my needles or my left needle drifted and being a little bit generous and saying, okay, probably about two, cent uh, two millimeters, not centimeters, millimeters, I marked another sweet spot on this piece of tape and I'll move, I'll move my binder over a little bit more so that you can see it. And I know you saw it in the beginning of the video. That's approximately two millimeters to the left of my binder. Now it's really great to have both where you wanna go and your sweet spot because you won't be able to see that while you're sewing. Um, you won't be able to line up your bumper to the needle tick and those kinds of things while you're sewing because your fabric will be in the way. So that was my, um, my method to, uh, to get those results. And for me, it's important to, to have these uh, guides on, on the bed of my machine because in this project that I'm going to be doing, yeah, I keep in mind, I actually have four outer curves. So I have two outer curves on each leg of these pants and to um, make sure that they, they look even and that each of those four curves look the same and um, you know give the same look and feel, you're going to want to be able to generate consistent results. So having these marks on your bed will help you greatly. So I hope you've enjoyed um, watching this portion of the video and uh, actually what I'm going to do for you, because some people do like to see the work on the actual project, uh, I will add at the end the um, sort of the, the little slightly faster and abbreviated version of the, um, the actual project so that uh, you can also enjoy that. So as I already said, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope you've uh, learned a bit about how to um, work on these outer curves and I've taken enough with you so that you can um, reproduce these kinds of results and adjust it to the needs of your project. So thank you for joining me in Rebecca's Sewing Corner and happy sewing.